Good afternoon, everyone. All right, are we in focus? We are in focus, but we are very crooked again. Hang on a minute. All right, there we go. Try that. Am I straight, Louise? Can you look at it? Oh, it's better. Oh, God, I can hear myself. Hang on. There we go. No, wrong button. How are we all? Hey, Annalise. I hope your afternoon is going fantastic. I know mine certainly is. I've done a, fan, a, oh, a really fun live Facebook this morning. And I am, I've got the rubber gloves out, people. It's going to be an inky afternoon with some alcohol inks. And I'm going to create a project using Art by Marlene products on alcohol ink. Thought I'd give that one a go. So as part of the Great International Craft Show that is happening online this weekend, all weekend, we are having some fantastic things on special, including today's special, which is 15% off washi tape, which I'm hoping I'm going to use on this tag, 15% uh, off alcohol ink, which I'm about to have a bit of a play with, and 15% off paper collections. Hey there, Brayden. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be having an absolute ball doing this and we're going to play, be, create lots of colour and uh, yeah, make lots of pretty things. Uh, another thing I want to mention, we are doing a daily prize draw, which means one lucky order is going to receive a little bit of a bonus in their order over the weekend, uh, over today, I should say, sorry. And we are, and I'll draw that tomorrow morning live on Facebook. So Christmas things are also 15% off today. And we have got some excellent specials, including we've got Art by Marlene on special, uh, the single paint tubes. We've got some watercolor paints by Art by Marlene on special, as well as some storage solutions. We have got some embellishment bundles and some tag and stencils bundles. So we've got a huge range, something to suit absolutely everyone. All right, where can you find these specials? Here. nataliemay.com.au and you'll find everything there online. Easy to navigate, lots and lots of options for you. Um, you can also join the Natalie May Scrapbooking Creative Community on Facebook, we've got a great little group where we, um, we're all great friends, we share our work, I do monthly giveaways. Uh, the, I'm, the current, there's a couple of competitions up at the moment where we, you can win a $25 gift card for the online store just by sharing some of the creations that you have made uh, with products purchased from my store. And then the competition for December, is to send me a Christmas card. Louise and I want to receive your Christmas cards in the post. So uh, all the information is online there and you can win a $25 gift card for that. All right. So let's crack into it. I am going to be playing with alcohol inks today and I I've got a bit of an idea on what I want to do. I want to create a tag or something like that using alcohol inks. So most of you know, alcohol inks are a, a fantastic product that is super fun, super easy to use. And really, really, they give it such a vibrant, awesome finish. So I thought I'd just have a bit of a play, first of all, and get a few bits and pieces out um, and drying. Um, I've got some 6x4 cardstock and I've got some, sorry, Yupo paper and I've got some tag size ones here and I just thought I'd have a bit of a play with a couple of different colour combinations. Um, so while I'm doing this, I've just taken the lids off ready to go off of my set here just so it makes things a lot quicker and easier. Um, I haven't shaken them, which is something that I should have done off camera. Uh, but of course, alcohol inks are... They work on Yupo. So, of course, as most of you know, Yupo or a synthetic plastic-based paper is what you need if you are creating 
with alcohol inks because you don't want it to soak in. You don't want the liquid and the inks to soak in. You want them to sit on top of your paper and move around. And that's what we are wanting to do today. So a couple of other things I've got handy is some alcohol blending solution to help move the ink around on the page. I've got a protective backdrop here and I have a heat tool which I'm going to use to semi-dry my product. So I'm gonna do a couple at a time here just so that we're going to get them drying nice and quickly. I'm going to put some fluorescent colors down first. So I love the Couture Creations fluoros. They just are fantastic. They dry beautifully and they look really, really good on backgrounds and products, okay? So I thought I will start with doing that. I'm gonna pop a bit more yellow in here. And then I'm going to, a little bit more blending solution perhaps. And then I'm gonna use my heat gun to move it around. So what happens is the alcohol evaporates, leaving the ink on our background. Now I could pick it up and move it around. I could use my air blower. I might just use that to move it around to start with. Now, the only reason I'm wearing gloves is because it does stain your fingernails a little uh, and your hands. And I have to go out tonight and it would be really nice to go out not being covered in ink for a change. Now, it is also a good idea to work in a well-ventilated area because alcohol inks are quite fragrant. They do have um, straight alcohol in them, so therefore they are going to be quite, quite fragrant. All right, so you can see what's happening, just moving it around with my air puffer. This is an old one that I've had for years by Tim Holtz. We do have some Couture Creation ones available um, online at the moment. I'm just gonna fill in these gaps here. And I can continue to build on it. And I'm pushing that air around. On here. Welcome everyone. How are we all this afternoon? Oh, I've got a few of you joining in. Joining in. Hope your Friday's going well. And I feel like I need to put a little bit more pink down in this area here. So I'm just gonna drip that in. Fabulous. And now I'm just gonna pop these off to the side to dry and I can't lift them up because I, my gloves won't let me. So I'm just gonna find something to do that. And do that. So the protective mat here is, I'm just wiping that excess alcohol ink off, but it's going to uh, come clean, no problems. And that's the whole idea about using a surface light, one of these ranger mats, because they will come clean really well. So now I'm gonna do something in blues and greens. So like I said, this is alcohol ink paper. It is UPO paper that is especially designed to hold the ink on top. Um, now I'm gonna use here, this one is called Golden Age and it is like a glitter, a yellow glitter. So it's gonna have a little bit of a sparkle to it. And I'm quite generous with my alcohol inks. I am more than happy to squirt it around, let it, let it flow and then blend it, kind of blend it all together. There are lots and lots of different ways of creating super technical things, but this is going back to basics and doing something that gives a really awesome effect that you can build on, you can stamp over the top of, and I'm not wanting to make it anything more than that. 
So I plan on adding some images to this, perhaps adding some stamping over the top as well once it's dry. And as you can see, I'm being a little directional with my nozzle and pushing that uh, alcohol ink around to fill all the gaps. And then any additional gaps I've got, I can take another color, and move that around. And I'll do a different one down here, go for something a bit darker. So I'm not going to add any metallics. Hello Val, Jean and Linda. Welcome, welcome girls. So these alcohol inks are fabulous, like I said, for creating beautiful backgrounds, fantastic, um, you know, card, like the card bases or tags, something like that. Uh, I'm just going to, I wanna darken up some of these edges here. So I'm just gonna drip in a little bit of one of these darker navy blues. Uh, there are a whole range of colors available with alcohol inks. I have, uh, I don't have all of them open myself. I tend to mix them up a bit and blend them together making my own colors but you can quite easily add a lot to your collection. Uh, I do know that there's a few of you out there who have got most of the colors. And again, my favorite phrase for shows, there's no judgment on that. You do what works for you. All right, I'm really liking that. So I'm just going to pop this off to the side to dry so the air air will so the alcohol will evaporate leaving that color sitting on the cardstock. All right, pop that one there. Oh, got a bit of movement there. So you can move it around. I'm just going to pop that one on the floor. So it does stain, so putting it on the floor, uh, make sure you don't have a carpet that will stain because it will stain. All right, let's go for, I'll do one more. That side, that size. Um, so you can use, the paper that I'm using here, Elizabeth, is Upo paper, so I have cut them to to size here i'm pretty frugal with my paper i uh tend to cut down and use only what i need this is a fluorescent purple and i'm going to mix this today with some of these darker more deep blues uh, so yes you do need to use something that is going to allow the alcohol ink to move around and not soak in because if you put it on just a normal cardstock of course it's just going to soak right in and it's not going to have any movement at all and the movement is what makes it look amazing so just using the little air cuffer here So if I was to use my heat tool to do this, it pushes it together a little bit, but it still looks fabulous. So I'm gonna build as I go. But of course, you don't want to uh, use too much with your heat gun because it's a synthetic paper, it may melt your paper. So you do have to keep it moving. You do have to allow that, whoops, allow that to move around a bit.
And what I like about the heat gun is it creates these lovely little ridges where the ink dries. And that's probably my favorite technique that I do with alcohol inks. That's annoying me. And like I said, they don't take, take long to dry. You don't necessarily have to use a heat tool. So I'm just gonna pop these ones aside to dry. And then I'm going just to create a couple of other ones or just to show you some other color combinations. And then we will get on to making our tag. There we go. Clean up my mess. So there are plenty of different things that you can do with alcohol inks. Now, uh, just normal, uh, you can use normal gloss card to do this. So this is like a gloss card stock. It's not a Yupo paper. It's um, going to react differently, but I thought I would show you something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna put down some you have to work a lot quicker with this. So if I get on some greens and some gold, it's gonna soak in a lot quicker. There's certainly not as much movement, but you do get a different effect. So just moving it around, it so like I said, it soaks in a lot quicker because it has more of a paper quality to it than a synthetic paper. So it will... And it will dry slightly different as well. So this is just using one glitter and you can see that there's definite a, gl a definite glitter through there. And now I can add in, I'm just gonna add a few drops of color through the middle. And you can see that, oh, hopefully, hang on. I'll bring it up to camera. You can see how that's now puddled across the page. Put my little, my little puffer. Ooh. I know it's a bit fragrant in here, Lou. I won't need a drink before going out tonight. Now I've got a little bit too much ink here. So what I'm going to do is just tip that off on the background onto my puppy training pad. <laughs> and the glitter, <laughs> Louise is having a heart attack. Um, and the glitter is sitting beautifully on top of the card. So that will work. I don't love using photo paper. Some people swear by um, like photo printing paper. I'm just gonna turn the fan on, hang on. You all right, Lou? I'm good. You good? I'm gonna turn my fan on in here just for air circulation purposes. Yeah. Um, don't light a match. Don't light a match, you reckon? And I'm just checking in on one of my other ones which was on the floor. All right, that one's looking good. And since I'm having a bit of a play here, I'm just gonna keep on going, why not? If I don't use the alcohol blending fluid, you can get a really, really interesting effect as well. Oh, didn't clean my area off. Got a bit of bonus green. Okay, what was I doing? That one. That one. So I'm just gonna do a little of this. Where I haven't used any blending fluid, but I'm just gonna let the colors move around themselves. can't help it, I have to touch it. I've lost my yellow, I didn't put enough on. And I do love that the alcohol inks with in the fluoros, they dry with a little bit of a matte finish, which looks very cool. 
So back to basics, just creating here something that looks really, really bright and bold. No technique involved, but what does make it work is making sure that you choose colors that are not going to muddy up. So choosing colors that are alongside each other on the color wheel, instead of choosing colors that are opposite on the color wheel, because what happens if you go opposite, you make mud. Okay, so we don't wanna make something that is not visually pleasing. We wanna make something that looks really, really pretty. Okay, so that one's really orange, but that's my bad. So a bit more pink on there. Oh, you know what, stuff it. Let's get a bit of purple through the middle. Orange and purple traditionally don't go very well together because they're opposite on the color wheel. But seeing that a lot of my base here was dry and it has gone a little bit brown and muddy, I'm just gonna let that sit just to show you how it can look. All right, coming along quite nicely here. My little pieces are drying off to the side. So what I wanna do is get all of these guys out the way. I might just, I can't help myself, I might just do one more in blues, just to show you how pretty, how pretty the, um, the blues and the greens are. All right. Plain Yupo, not fancy. And this time there's going to be no blending fluid. I'm just going to drip it on. I'm moving quite decisively. And I'm being quite generous with my colors, as you can see. And I know that you are getting a bit of glare, but I'll bring it up in a moment. Uh, that color, that color, what happened to, oh yeah, that'll work. So this time I'm gonna use my heat gun to move it around. And I've got the heat directly on top. So it's really drying it as I go and really creating these puddle lines here. So when I pull it up to camera in a moment, you'll see exactly what I mean. Like that. Oh, it's a bit warm. All right, so they look fantastic. All right, so I'm just gonna dry off some of these ones we did earlier. Get these guys out of the way before I work on my little project. Okay. Oh, now I've got alcohol ink everywhere. That didn't work. Let me just stand that up and pop that on the floor next to me instead of an uneven surface. Surface. Didn't really think that through. Okay. All right, so what is next is I'm gonna get rid of these gloves because I hate not being able to feel my fingertips when you're creating, not a whole lot of fun. And I'm gonna dry off some of these backgrounds that I created earlier to make sure that I can stamp on them or uh, stick something on them or ink the edges or build on them. So this one is almost dry it's going to give it a little bit more love so the matte sorry the fluorescent alcohol inks they actually dry with a bit of a matte finish so they are really really good for stamping over the top of and again i'm keeping my heat gun moving because yupo paper is synthetic so therefore if I hold it on one place it is going to melt which is not the effect we're going for 
So now you get to watch me dry paint because everybody loves doing that. So you can see that's got no shine to it. That's because the, yeah, they've got that matte finish. So alcohol inks today and washi tape and all of our paper collections are all 15% off, along with everything to do with Christmas. It would be really ideal that we don't have any Christmas stuff left in January, so, um, so that we can make room for new things that are coming out in the new year. These aren't taking much to dry at all because like we said, all we have to do is that alcohol content needs to evaporate, leaving the ink sitting on top of the paper or the glitter or whatever it is. And then here's this last one that we've got. So I don't like to use um, isopropyl alcohol with my alcohol inks. I like to use a blending fluid because it, it, it seems to move a lot better than what isopropyl alcohol does. Um, the, there's lots and lots of, like I said, lots of different tips, techniques and things that you can do with alcohol inks, but I generally like to keep it nice and simple and keep it back to, you know, just go back to basics and create simple things that are pretty. All right, that's enough heat gun action. So let's bring them up. So that one's still a little bit wet, but you can see how adding that purple over the top has actually muddied it up a little bit. Not, not as pretty. This one's quite good. And because I put so much ink on, can you see that really awesome effect there of the crackling? So it's like a crazing sort of effect because I really overdid it. Um, speaking of overdid it, I think uh, Louise has had to open a window because I've really got that alcohol ink in there. This is the heavier cardstock, the gloss cardstock, and it has reacted a little bit differently, but it has still worked quite well. So these are looking very, very pretty. Now this is the, um, the plain alcohol ink mixed with the fluoro, and you can see that it's not shiny, it's lost its shimmer, and that's because the fluorescent is matte. So there's plenty of options there. All right, let's have a go at making something pretty. Drink break. So I pulled out some uh, by Marlene stamps and papers and bits and pieces. This one here is from the Out of This World collection, which is her, one of her latest releases. And it's a little bit different, it's a little bit quirky, but I thought I would try and use, I'd use this image here to, as, as my focal piece on a bit of a tag. Uh, I also have here the one called uh, Writing on the Wall, which is just a whole little piece of like alphabet -y letters. Um, and then I pulled aside a few other of these bits I thought I might stick something on so these are the paper elements and these are the die cut pieces so you get a heap in these packs really really clever and more importantly right up my alley no fussy cutting involved they are all punch out pieces so there's some Christmas designs there's some outer space designs there's some birds bird on a scooter I think everyone needs a bird on a scooter astronauty person on a horse you know a witch 
There is something in here to suit absolutely everyone. Little robots, uh, quirky little images, perfect for art journaling. Um, there's a page where they've got, I don't know if you can tell that they are glittery. And then the next page is non-glitter. So we've got glitter and non-glitter. So there's a quite a range in here. Um, looks like me sitting on the side of the bed this morning. Um, I love that little guy. No, I don't think I'm going to use that. The other thing that uh, I've got here is the arty paper pad. And these are arty backgrounds ready to go. Oh, look at her. Uh, but these images are a bit too big for what I'm, I'm thinking about using. So I reckon I'll pop that aside. Let's have a look at this one. This is just lovely thin collage paper. So we've got images here that I can cut out, uh, put in my art journal, but I'm just wanting to do a couple of quick tags today. So I'm thinking that maybe these images might be a little bit too big for my small cards. These will be great for my art journal. Pop that aside. That's a no-go. All right, back to stamps. So then I've got this stamp set here, which is called Borderline, and I know I'm going to use that today. Right, tag. Let's make a tag. All right, so I'm going to use that one first. I'm going to cut my corners off. You'd think I'd be able to find a pair of scissors, wouldn't you? Okay. So I'm going to do that. So to cut the corners off, I cut my corner off like that. To make sure the other corner is exactly the same, I turn it over. And that, I use that as a guide to cut. And that will make my tag have exactly the same dimension all the way around. Um, I think I want to do this a little bit um, inky, sort of, I don't know. I've got a blending tool here. I've got some dist black soot distress oxide. I think I might just darken up some of these edges a bit. Is black soot distress oxide my best option? Probably not because it will oxidize with the air. So how about I go for this instead, black soot. And I'm just going to wipe that off. Just a quick swipe and it's gone. All right, let's have another go. So this time I'm using black soot. Oh, that's better. And it's just dusting up the side, just a little. Adding a bit of shadow. And I can also get in and do a little bit of that. So this one is called Writing on the Wall. It is an Art by Marlene stamp. And I'm going to use it like this, like a loose stamp. I'm not going to put it on a block or a stamp press. I'm going to just do a little bit of organic stamping. So that it is not perfect. I do not want perfection here. See how that's sitting on the top there? That's crooked, that annoys me. But you know, should be right. Okay, pop that aside. And now I'm going to use this one here. And I'm gonna be a bit cheeky and just do 
this top half. So I'm going to very carefully fold that over just because I don't want to use my stamp press because I'm being lazy. See that stamping on there? That works really well. And while I've got it out, I might, I might do a fluorescent one as well. So I'll do a tag in the fluoros because it shows up better on camera. And I'll do a very similar thing in this. And I'll cut that off to be a tag in a minute as well. So I want to use the scallop edge. So this time I really do need a longer surface. What can I use? I do, I'm going to use my stamp press because it will work better. If you don't have a stamp press, you are definitely missing out on in your life. This does make life so much easier. It is just ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to anchor with the magnets so that nothing moves. You fold the plastic back. And then... I add ink to it over here. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, a little bit on camera there. And then I can stamp on. Now, the best thing is if it doesn't stamp, stamp perfectly, which it hasn't, I can go back and I can add more. And I can make it darker. I can make it blacker. I can make it more intense. Like so. So that my detail doesn't go away. And that is lovely and crisp. Now because we're using black archival ink and archival inks are a oil, have an oil base to them, what I do need to do is make sure that I dry it with the heat gun. I just had the idea of popping that across the bottom. Perfect. Um, and yes, you do need to dry it off with a heat gun. So I will do that in a moment. Just gonna add this across the bottom to this one. Now, like I said, I do know that the lighting isn't, uh, the reflection is kind of making it a little bit tricky but I'm going to bring it up to camera and show you in just a second. Um, so Linda's just asked the question, oxidized in the air, what does that mean? With the distress oxides, I find that the, and I don't know the technical term because I'm just, you know, me, but with this distress oxides, I find that they get a little bit white over time. So, they're lovely and rich and black on here. But what I will do is I'll just leave that to sit and dry and I'll show you what happens after a period of time. It, I find that it lightens up. So if I blend this out a bit, and I'll be doing some um, techniques tomorrow with inking with distress oxides as well. So make sure that you, and, and other inks, ink brands as well, make sure you tune in. So, you know, I really rubbed that out and it's kind of, you know, faded down. So I just find that, that they do. So I'm going to pop that off to the side and I'll come back to that. Uh, right, now I'm just drawing off this stamped image before I cut this back to be a tag. Just so that my black ink doesn't smudge because it's sitting on, on top of a slick surface. Might add some words. I wonder if I've got any ink left on that. No. Pop 
that one aside. Now I want to cut this off to be a tag, so I'll do the same thing, holding that on an angle, flip it, line it up, and that is how you get your angle to be the same on both sides, because if you do it freehand, the chances of you getting your angle the same are very slim. Right, and mine aren't the same. How did I get that wrong? That'll do it. Okay, I'm gonna get a black pen now. So I've just got a, oh, the ongoing dramas of Natalie May and black pens. Let's see if this one works. Okay, we're off and running. I want to do a little bit of a black doodle border, so I want to grab that, connect it up. Black Sharpies will work really well for this. As well, any sort of black permanent pen, and you want to make it permanent because you're working on this Yupo paper, this synthetic paper. of a doodle down there and I'll do the same thing on my blue one which isn't really showing up but you know what it is there and off camera it does look pretty good some of the other elements that are on this stamp set are this guy here, I might pop him on. Now, I could stamp it in white, but I don't have a white ink pad handy. So I'm going to do it in black. And that puts this super lovely, gorgeous, fine little image up there. I like that. And I'll add it to this one as well. Come back and clean that later. And also I've got these lovely little stars. So this is where the, um, like a white ink pad would look fantastic. And I might even add a white pen once I'm 100% sure that this alcohol ink is all dry so that I don't get any transfer. Oh, I really like that stamp. Let me show you on the fluoro. Oh yeah. That is nice. Oh yeah, okay, look at that. How detailed and thin, I don't know if you can see how lovely and thin that is. No, Natalie, knowing when to stop is important. Let's do it on this one. So pretty and so detailed. Anyway, let's put the lid on that before I stamp anything else. All right, so I've got my two tags here. Up here, close, you can see there's a little bit going on. last one is actually a sewing a sewn line but I'm not going to 
stress about putting that on today. All right, the image that I have, my, my focal point image, I've pre-cut out. Um, I actually decided to stamp it on a couple of different surfaces to see what was going to work. Uh, so I did it on some uh, collage paper first and some deli paper. And then I settled on white cardstock uh, because I thought that that would look best. So I'm going to foam tape that on. Um, I'm not even going to colour it in actually. I'm going to leave it in black and white because I quite like it in black and white. Hey Louise, yeah. would you grab for me the Art by Marlene uh, sticker book please? Oh. Sorry? Yeah, the new one. The one that I need. You know that one that I didn't... I I that. Not really. I'm going to use these in a minute. Take it off. Yes, please. I'll use it on every project I teach this weekend. <laughs> I promise. All right. So she's super cute. So she could be laying on a half a moon. She could be hugging half a moon. I don't know. There she is. She's on there. She's on there. Um, and I'm going to keep it super simple here. And I'm going to grab some of these sticky quotes. And these have got some lovely sayings in them. All right, and I'm not going to go through all of them because, really. Delivery! Oh, that's your new gym gear. Because it's Black Friday specials and we have to buy pretty things too. All right, so let's go back to here and go with fly amongst the stars we'll grab that one oh you know what i didn't do is that washi tape amongst the stars I do need to do some pops of white on here definitely so yes Linda I saw that the sky is the limit so what happens is with this one because I want the sky is the limit but I want to cut it up because I don't want to use it as this whole piece So I'm going to round off this corner just so that it looks like it fits a bit better because the corners were already cut off on this one so I've got to make it work. Now if I was going to add washi tape, something that uh, is interesting as well is washi tape you can alcohol ink on as well. Uh, so if I just took, oh see let me put this aside, I'll quickly show you. And I'll come back and add that on in a minute. But this is some, just some from my personal stash. But I want to add a little bit of alcohol ink to that. In what colour? In pink. And I'm going to use a, a blending tool to colour it. And now I'll quickly dry it off and then I'll put it on my project.
So if you think your washi tape is the wrong colour, there's no reason why you can't <laughs> tear it properly, like me. Ah, okay, hang on. I'm doing it like this way because the um, the script goes that way. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to stick on my phrase and we are done. Righty o, done, done, done. The sky is the limit. Done. Alrighty, so what we have done today is created two quick little tags. Um, like I said, I'm going to add some white splatters to this one, especially, just so that you can see how, you know, it's going to pop. And when I, I'll take a photo and pop it up online and link you to the products that we have used. Um, but of course, everything is on blending card. We are, oh, sorry, Upo paper, so that the colours move around with the alcohol inks. We've got all that lovely stamping in the background. I used black soot distress archival ink for that. Gee, that's so crooked. Um, and on this one, we use the fluorescent alcohol inks just to create something a little bit brighter and punchier. Uh, and yes, it is. Linda, this sticker book is called Sticky Quotes. And if you type, uh, well, it's it's just the Essentials Sticky Book. And it is with the Art by Marlene products. Um, all right, so yeah, it's, it's not at all complicated. It is a lovely, easy project. I've created all of these fun card fronts ready to go for, or when I put a thank you card in with your order, maybe you'll get one of these. What do you reckon? Um, so I can, you know, stamp on them, create these lovely, lovely little card fronts. So very easy. But for you to create um, with alcohol inks, a couple of tips. You do need to be using Upo paper. You do need to be using a synthetic paper so that the colours move around and don't soak into your paper okay so you do need to be using something with a bit of gloss on it otherwise it just won't work all right so there you go so alcohol inks today are 15 percent off as well as the alcohol ink paper that we are using um, that is also on discount all paper collections are also on special and they are 15% off, so you can get a great range of alcohol ink, sorry, papers. You can get a great range of papers. Um, and Christmas stuff as well, that is all on special. I might just leave that one like that. Um, so there's lots and lots of things happening today. Uh, and no judgment postage is back. So what that means is that we will Bundle all your orders together and you only need to pay for postage one time, okay? So you pay $12.50 on your first order and then all your other orders after that, you will need to choose no judgment, okay? So there you go. Okay, so that's it from me for today. I think I have taken up enough of your afternoon. I will be back here at 3.30 and I'm going to do a Art by Marlene paint art journal page. All right, guys, thank you again for tuning in. Jump online to nataliemay.com.au and take advantage of today's specials. Um, and I will take some photos of these, this, these little tags pop the information up online for you and I will see you back here in about an hour. Okay, see you soon.